The Smart Board Revolution Global Virtual User Group presents a Smart Survival Guide video. This is the Effective Smart Board Use Series, and this video is interacting with downloaded video on a smart board. My name is Matt Granger. You can connect with me on Twitter, Google Plus at the Smart Board Revolution Google Plus community. I've also done a video on interacting with online video. So video that's on YouTube or TeacherTube or Vimeo or uh, Discovery Streaming or CCC Streaming, wherever you can get online video. And if you want to watch that video, go ahead and click above in the box and that will take you to that video. But this one is going to be specifically downloaded video. We're going to take a look first at how this would work on a PC and then some options that you would have on a Mac. So when Smart Notebook is installed on a PC in the Smart Board, one of the Smart Board tools, if you go into your Windows notification area in the bottom right and you select the blue and white lifesaver looking smart icon, you have one called the video player. Now if smart makes a product it's going to work better on a smart board than a different product so if you download video my district uses CCC streaming and those videos you can watch them online but you can also download the videos I like to download them if I can because I want to watch them using the smart video player so here's the smart video player Again, you could watch it in a VLC player, you could watch it in Windows Media Player, but if Smart makes it, it's going to work better on the board. And we'll take a look at how that is in a little bit. So I have it open here. I'm going to go to File and Open. So I have downloaded a video already. So by default, it's looking for AVI, WMV, Windows type files here on a PC and that would be fine from discovery streaming CCC streaming does them as a mp4 file so I have to go to all files and there's the video that I want so I can open that it's gonna open here into a small window okay now with watching online video or using the Windows Media Player if you go full screen not gonna work you can't use Smart Ink with the full screen and that was also talked about in the previous video but with the Smart Video Player you can go full screen now my resolution is a little messed up but the full screen button looks similar to others where it has like the small square and then the arrow and the bigger square so I can click that now it's in full screen I'm going to get this little controller window that I can use I can play with the first button the second one is capture it's similar to the other capture tools screen capture tools in notebook it does have some inking tools I don't really use those the red X is to clear the ink and then the last one is the full screen and in this case it would take you back out of full screen so I'm gonna just put that down here and I'm gonna go ahead and start playing my video so this video is about dinosaurs so here's a dinosaur let's see what we got here Okay, so this, she said, others eat only plants. So maybe we are talking about, you know, what what are those called? So what are they called? We can talk to the students. So this dinosaur eats plants. What are those called? The students discuss or whatever. And then a student can come up and write it. Maybe we've talked about it. Maybe we haven't. Maybe this is a preview, right? So we're going to call them... herbivores I have this frame I have the annotation that I've put on there I can come to the second button over from play the capture button and I can tap that that's going to save this whole frame of the video 
and my annotation here into Notebook. Now I'm using Notebook 11.3, which is as of fall of 2013, the most current version. And it's actually created not just one whole image as in the past versions, but I've got the image and my text, I can even move it. All my annotations are separate and I can move them. That wasn't true in previous versions. So if you have a previous version of Notebook, that may not work for you and it would just be one image. So this is kind of new. So that one I didn't want, so I can go ahead and delete that. I have my annotations here. I can group these, I can lock them, I can resize, I can do whatever that I can do with any other image an object that I can get into notebook. So now that I've resized them, I can select them both, group them. So now it is just one. Now I can go back to my video and I don't have to do all that right now. It could just capture into notebook right in the background and you keep going with the video. If I select the red X, that will clear all of the annotations extinct so you can't see it from where you are but all I did was pick up the pen to pause the video right if smart makes it it's gonna work better with a smart board so they assume hey you picked up the pen you must wanna write so they're gonna pause the video for you I can go ahead what does extinct mean no more of them alive capture that frame goes into notebook it'll go into the same notebook that was already open I can hit the red X to clear the ink put the pen down and the video continues to roll so what are fossils right again this is how you use this to make the video and the content in the video more accessible to students, more meaningful to students, and as we talked about in the other video and we'll also talk about quickly here, you can use these slides for many different things later. So we talk about fossils, come up with you know a working definition or whatever, we capture it, put the pen down, it starts and the red X to clear the ink. Now I can do that as many times through the video as I need to. Okay, we're gonna stop this now. And I can come with the very last button back out of full screen. So a couple things I wanna show about the smart video player. If you have more than one video, you can drag them here to the playlist it will put them in order and then it will play through one after the other so if you can get clips I know with discovery streaming you can download the clips specific clips you can put those clips from different videos that you get from discovery streaming right in here you can save this playlist when you're done and then the next time as long as those videos are still if you put them all like into the same folder and save the playlist into that folder you open up the playlist and it'll be ready to go so we're back into notebook now we have all the images that we captured on our pages here however many that we did throughout the video right you can resize them you can drag them and put them onto other pages together Right. Anything that you can do with any other object in Notebook, you can do with these. And since in this newer version it makes the words and the image separate, which is kind of nice, but sometimes not so nice. So what can we do with these images now? We can use these images if a student was absent and they missed the video. I can have them sit with another student and they can go through the content 
of this video and they can with the annotations the student that was there can go through and tell the other student about the video if I have ELLs I can use these images with the annotations and I can copy and paste them into other notebook files I can create on tests I can put those images with specific questions to bring that content from the video back to mind with using a visual to help the ELL students uh, help them understand the question I can create a sequencing activity where the p images are on a page and students can put them in order that they came in the, the video and then use that to write a summary of the video. There are lots of things that you can do with them once you have them. You can use them as a starter for another lesson. You bring that image in to another notebook file use that to recall the content from the video discuss it then the rest of the pages of the new file have more information about that specific part of the content right lots of different ways that you can use this as a teacher with a smart board you should not be watching video if you can get that video downloaded on a PC you should be opening it and using it, watching it with the smart video player. Now what if you have a Mac? If you have a Mac and you have the video, you want to open it with QuickTime Player. So I will open a file and how about this Sun movie? This is one that I actually took with a telescope, a solar telescope Right, so maybe I want to show this now and talk about it. Now, you cannot go full screen. Going full screen with the Smart Ink, it doesn't work. So you're going to be using Smart Ink now if you're doing this with a Mac. But you can go bigger. If you go to the View, Fit to Screen, so you can see that the Smart Ink tab is up there and we'll go ahead and watch the video All right, I can now I'm gonna have to actually pause the video because that's you know it's not a smart made so it's not gonna work as well um, I can use my floating tools here now I have a black pen I have a black background not gonna really work if I touch that black pen and then the gear I can come in here and I can change it. Line style, I'm going to make it white. Thickness is good. And then at the very bottom here, save tool properties. So now that pen is white. And maybe I'll go with a yellow one for this. Another thing that I'm going to want on here, I may not want to capture the whole frame. If I do capture, it's going to capture that whole QuickTime window. Okay, if I write something in here. So I select, right, and so I can capture that and it will go into notebook. But what if I didn't want to capture that whole window? What if I just wanted a specific part? I can do that also with the floating toolbar, but I don't have the tool that I need right now. So at the bottom of the floating toolbar is the gear. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to customize my floating toolbar. Things that I don't want, like a keyboard, I can drag off and put over onto this window. Notebook, I don't need. I don't like the right click on there. I don't need the eraser. Right, it gets rid of the things I don't want. Things that I do want, I can now drag over. But right now, I just want the area capture. So I'm going to drag that over and drop it. And then hit Done. So now I have my white, yellow pen and the area capture. So if I don't want to use this, the Smart Ink tab to capture this whole frame, 
because right, like over here, right, this is part of this window, but it's not part of the actual video frame. Same over here, you just can't tell because it's all black, right? I don't need that. I just want the sun part. So I can select the area capture and I can drag and just get the part of the image that I want. That's going to go into notebook for me. Now I'm back to the video. I can use this to clear the ink. That's nice. And then I can go back and continue playing the video. You just have to be careful and you can, by the way, actually use the eraser from the tray to erase over the video. But if you are writing and now you want to go capture or something, right? you have to be careful. Let's see, I didn't go to the select, so that's why that didn't quite work properly. Okay, make sure that you finish writing. You have to kind of go back to the select arrow. Then you can select. All right, just a little bit of practice. You'll learn kind of the idiosyncrasies of how it works here with QuickTime. So in Notebook here now, similar to any other object, and we've already talked about this. So you can do with these the same thing that you can do with any other object. Capturing it this way through QuickTime Player instead of the Smart Video Player, right? This only makes the image. So the text is not, you can't ungroup this. It's grayed out. So this is just one image. So I mean, that's how the screen capture, the area capture in Notebook works. So you can't edit or do anything separately to the text and the picture. If you are a teacher with a smart board and you use downloadable video, whether that's even from YouTube, if you use something like Download Helper and you can get the video, if it's downloaded and you can open it, then on your PC you're using Smart Video Player or on a Mac you open your video in QuickTime Player and you use that and the Smart Ink to interact with the content, interact with the video to make the content more accessible to your students. I hope you will consider trying this. It will take time it's not as easy as just going online and opening it up and going full screen and just watching it. But it will be a more effective use of your smart board.